motion because you've actually taken the opportunity to feed it with fuel. So it then becomes sustained itself. Uh, and that's, that's actually how it works. Uh, so the, the T7s were built with wings that were similar to the F6. So it actually has two underwing hard points on each wing and uh, there are four fuel tanks on those underwing hard points. Uh, they're not used, they're purely cosmetic because the fuel that is actually used to go up and down the runway is in two tanks behind the cockpit in the top of the fuselage above the uh, front part of the engine and in that sort of wide space behind the cockpit. We don't need fuel tanks in the wings or fuel tanks under the wings to actually run up and down the runway. It's just not necessary. So they've been shut off. Uh, they're there, but they're, they're not in use. So the, the underwing drop tanks are on this aircraft and on the GA-11, purely cosmetic. And for those of you that have been coming for some number of years, you'll remember the Hunter had the ones on the outer wing pylons first, because getting the inner wing pylons was actually a bit like getting hen's teeth. And uh, I had to go down to the south coast to get them in the end. Uh, a few years ago, the plane had a repaint, um, and by the kind sort of goodness of a chap who lived down near Heathrow, uh, I got all the uh, markings uh, to stick on the plane. We also had another T7 here at that time, so I was able to look at that and see which positions exactly the markings were put on. So I think that this one is pretty complete. You'll notice on the sides of the nose, it has squadron markings of 208 Squadron, which was formed in Egypt in the First World War. And so the, the pointed flash on the nose represents the blue of the sky, the Sphinx in Egypt, uh, as part of the pyramid uh, system, and the blue of the well, blue of the sky and the yellow of the Mediterranean sand. So uh, that explains the the markings. The aircraft spent most of its life actually in Bahrain, and spent a couple of short periods of time with the Institute of Aviation Medicine at Farnborough, and was repainted a light grey with red flashes. Uh, which I thought didn't look very nice, so when it was repainted, we had it put back in the normal camouflage colours. As I say, a two-seater, side-by-side seating, uh, so that the instructor can see what the student is doing and demonstrate what is necessary as well, rather than the tandem seating that you tend to get these days dual controls, uh, two sets of instruments, one on each side showing the same thing, and the engine instrumentation in the middle so that both pilot and student can actually see it, one by looking left and one by looking right. Uh, gun sights there as well, they weren't there when the plane came but they've been acquired since. And also the pilot, John Ward, who is one of the Lightning pilots, uh, should, if he gets up enough speed, pop the tail parachute some way down the runway uh, towards the, the sort of intersection at the top. But you've got to have enough speed to be able to make it uh, not pop out because it's the, the drogue chute is spring-loaded, but to actually deploy so that it doesn't just drag along the ground because you've deployed it at very low speed. It's an absolute devil to pack. Uh, and thankfully we've got an expert parachute packer here as part of the Lightning Group who not only does the Lightning parachutes, which are even worse than that, they're the starting motor. No wind, or very little, so the cloud of black cordite smoke takes some considerable time to disperse. and I just can't tell from here whether the engine fired up or not uh, because the control cabin here is double glazed and I can't hear anything I can see but not hear. The aircraft has been here since April 2000. And four years later, 
later a wizard engineer turned up and said, could I get your plane going for you, please? So I said, you know, be my guest. I don't know how to do it. What I've done is replace rusty screws holding panels down with about 3,000 stainless steel ones, but I don't even know how to get into the cockpit, let alone uh, start up or make sure the engine's okay. So four years later, it went down the runway for the first time. Which, if I remember right, it was 2,000. Anyway, it looks as like though all is okay. The chocks have been pulled away. I think John is going to do a figure of eight steps, a little way up the runway, then go back down and then do a full block of and then come back to the park up. And that, with the casting starter, which is about 30 pounds a go, costs about 150 pounds, pounds in fuel, which is not bad at all really, so 300 pounds for the two displays a year. Uh, if I'm right, I think the cockpit cover is slightly open. Thank you. 